Okay. All right, that looks a little better. I'm just gonna log into these devices real quickly. So just to show you kind of um, the baseline topology settings, and then we'll just go over a few, um, few settings that we use for provisioning of all of this. Okay, so this is my uh, this is my panorama setup, and I'll just quickly touch up uh, about uh, upon a couple of different elements we discussed um, previously. And my mouse just stopped working. Okay, here we go. New battery. So um, initially, we talked about link tags um, that we create. So I have. Um, just gonna touch up on all of those real quickly. So we have a couple of, or four different link tags that I'm using in my environment, just basically for ISP providers. Um, those are set up as shared. I have uh, four different devices that I'm deploying on, right? And some of them have a different, uh, different um, environment setup. So I have a branch uh, on my branch east, actually, I'm utilizing three. Uh, I'm not utilizing this last one. I'm utilizing three different ISPs. On my um, uh, Hub Denver, I'm actually using two ISPs. On my 220, I'm also using two ISPs. These last two are not utilized. And then on the New York branch, I'm utilizing basically just a single ISP. And you can correlate those within um, within the functionalities I have enabled here. So I'm sorry, my mouse seems to be going out of service. It's just great. Okay. So um, the functionality enabled here, right? SDWAN 901. I'll just scroll through a couple of these real quickly just to show you what we have enabled. But on my Denver hub, I have two ISPs. So basically, just kind of the same elements we went through, right? I've created some traffic distribution profiles for my specific branches, as well as some baseline SD-WAN policies that I'm using for my testing, either with iPerf or SSH, basically. But once I've... Uh, this is really... Okay, so once I have... Um, configured all these, right? Basically within the panorama, I've gone to plugins and I have downloaded the SD-WAN plugin 212, uh, which, um, which I'm utilizing for this specific testing. There is a few considerations with plugins and uh, I'll share some resources with you to, to just inform you on some of those decisions. But basically I'm using a plugin 212 and most of my firewalls are on 10.1.4 or 10.1.5 code. But once that plugin is downloaded is where I get my SD-WAN um, configuration section here, right? I have four devices onboarded. So I have um, Denver hub, which is, my, uh, which is my hub location here. I have the router ID and loopback assigned to it. I have a couple of different subnets that I have behind this device uh, with some Linux servers. And then this, uh, the summary subnet here is strictly for my connectivity to this lab. And then I have my um, uh, uh, branch east and branch 220, uh, which I also have a couple of subnets behind them and my branch um, uh, New York City here. And then within the cluster setup, I actually have two different clusters, like I mentioned before. So I have um, uh, SD-WAN cluster one, which is a hub and spoke deployment. I have uh, the 220 and branch east part of it with the Denver hub. And then I have cluster two, which has hybrid, uh, which has um, this New York City branch, and then basically same hub reutilized, right? But when I created this cluster, um, and I actually configure it, this is basically a portion that does all of my um, all of my auto VPN provisioning. So I will just pull up my uh, Denver hub location here. Uh, within within the SD WAN. Um, SD-WAN plugin, you will see a bunch of stuff provisioned. So there was a question earlier, right? Does the, does the plugin do all of the VPN out of provisioning? 
So it does. Based on what you set up as your link types uh, within the SDN interface profiles, and then one, what, uh, what sites you add to cluster, basically plugin will use that information to do other provisioning for all the, for all the IPsec tunnels for you, as well as IP gateways. So we will see those IP gateways uh, as well as well as the IPsec tunnel. So there is a few other things that the tunnel does. And like we mentioned before, right? Uh, it does other provisioning of the, of the loopbacks, loopback 901 specifically for BGP peering, as well as the SD-band virtual interfaces here. So uh, I showed a screenshot of this earlier, but basically my SD-WAN 901 and then my SD-WAN VIVs to all of my branches. Once those are provisioned, plugin will also, within the, that same process, plugin will also provision uh, BGP peering for you based on the information that you've added in the, in the SD-WAN overlay, or I'm sorry, in the SD-WAN plugin under the devices onboarding. So if I take a look here in my, uh, in my VR, you will see a few things that are gonna be specifically plugin related. Uh, but by default, if you don't have BGP running, plugin will enable the BGP for you and then use the information provided within, um, within the onboarding portion for router ID and ASN number. It will, uh, by default, always reject your default route and select install route if you don't have it already enabled. It will set up your peer group. So basically, it will set up a peer group to, uh, to each peer device. And within that peer group, it will set up your peer um, basically switching everything to eBGP and doing just slight modification on connection options for basically multi-hop, which adjusts that to 64 by default in case we have multiple hops for any of our BGP peers. Uh, it will also create uh, some export rules. So basically plugin will basically create a export rule for each one of your peers and each peer will have a or specific community string that it will have to um, that it will tag all its routes with that and it will have to match that community string in order for basically to that to that uh, to that BGP export to be uh, to be allowed right um, and then it will also add the redistribution rule here so this is where on, this is from the hub perspective again but this is where I've entered my my uh, prefix list, right, that I want to redistribute. This is where the plugin has tagged that community string uh, to each one of my prefixes. I'm adding into the BGP overlay, and then uh, basically I'm matching. I'm matching uh, that community string via this export rule in order to to let it uh, to let it be redistributed to all the other BGP peers. And the reasoning for that is we basically don't want to have anything. Anything outside of, um, you know, we don't want to advertise anything out of SD WAN overlay unless we need to, and this basically gives us that controlled environment to to do this. So a few other things I wanted to touch upon is uh, some of the, and I'll show I'll show you a couple of uh, path monitoring metrics within within the environment, but I just wanted to show up a couple of or show off a couple of quick logs that. Um, I had a chance to generate some traffic uh, over the last few days, but basically show you once you enable SD-WAN overlay, what you will see from the from the session shift perspective, right? So I'm just filtering. Um, I'm just filtering for any applications here that are um, that I have basically app. Uh, I have a, I've had a session shift for a specific application. And these were just some of the. I perf tests I was doing basically on port 5001. Uh, when you enable SD WAN uh, and you have the SD WAN um, clusters deployed, uh, you will get, you will see this uh, additional sec uh, section under the, the traffic logs where you'll basically be able to pull details on any of your, uh, any of your traffic shifts, right? So you'll be able, basically able to see information on what the initial path was, what the first link switch was. In this case, I had a link switch from tunnel, um, or I had the link switch to tunnel 0102, basically to another physical interface. And the reason for flap was in this case, latency. Looks like we introduced latency of about 
uh, for one, 104 millisecond, which was obviously over the threshold for this specific iperf. And then we have uh, another link switch here. And based on this, you can tell I'm using a top-down distribution profile because basically that traffic moves to the primary link. And the reason is resume. So basically saying, I'm moving you to your preferred link path, right? So just, uh, just a few more options. And again, we're getting really close on time for the next session. So um, please feel free to utilize, um, utilize um, a q and A. I I will try to get any questions uh, regarding this. I'll also be sharing some resources uh, with you um, regarding some of these new functionalities. And then also we introduced a new section within the Piano SSDVM. This is part of the slide deck as well. But we've introduced another section down here in the bottom uh, called Experts Corner. We're basically going into the really low level overview of, of certain information. So SD-WAN policy best practices, the pad selection primer. So basically how we how we treat pad shifts and pad selections, right? Implementing QoS and then uh, SD-WAN uh, auto provisioning primer. So basically everything gets auto provisioned via the SD-WAN uh, SD plugin. So with that in mind, I'll go ahead and uh, since we're ready to start the next session, I'll stop my screen share and then we'll have um, uh, we'll have Graham take over here in, uh, in a couple of minutes as well.